The conventional harness for the above elbow prosthesis is, like the below elbow prosthesis, described by a figure of eight pattern. Here, the prosthetist traces the path of the straps of the above elbow figure of eight harness. The first component of the harness is the axilla loop. The axilla loop serves as the anchoring point for the transmission of body motion to activate the prosthetic components as well as to suspend the prosthesis on the stump. The second component of the harness is the anterior suspensor. The anterior suspensor helps to suspend the prosthesis on the stump, as well as helping to prevent rotation between the stump and the socket during motion. The anterior suspensor originates at the axilla loop, passes over the shoulder on the amputated side, through the deltopectoral groove, and is attached to the anterior surface of the humeral section of the prosthesis by a piece of elastic webbing. The third element of the harness is called the lateral suspensor. The lateral suspensor passes just anterior to the acromion process and is attached to the proximal part of the humeral section of the socket. This strap is the main suspensory element of the harness. The fourth part of the harness is the control attachment strap. Taking its origin from the axilla loop, the control attachment strap passes below mid-scapular level and attaches to the proximal end of the elbow flexion terminal device control cable. The fifth component of the harness is the elbow lock control strap. The elbow lock control strap originates at the anterior suspensor by a buckle, or as you see here, a Velcro fastener. The distal portion of the anterior suspensor is elastic webbing. This allows sufficient excursion to cycle the elbow lock. Let's next examine how the harness just described allows the amputee to use body motion to operate his prosthesis. Shoulder flexion is the primary control motion which the above elbow amputee uses to both flex the prosthetic elbow and to operate the terminal device. As mentioned earlier, shoulder flexion is an excellent source of both force and excursion. This motion puts tension on the forearm lift terminal device cable, which is transmitted to the elbow flexion attachment, causing the elbow to flex and the terminal device to open. Additional cable excursion and force for elbow flexion and terminal device operation is obtained by abducting the scapulae. The motion of scapular abduction provides excellent force but only moderate cable excursion. Here the amputee demonstrates how a combination of shoulder flexion and scapular abduction is used to flex the elbow and to control the terminal device. Elbow lock control is affected by a complex shoulder motion which involves downward rotation of the scapula combined with simultaneous abduction and slight extension of the shoulder joint. Here, the medic user demonstrates the ideal body motion pattern used to cycle the elbow unit. Notice how the motion causes the elastic portion of the anterior suspensor to be stretched. When the amputee relaxes after pulling the elbow control strap, the elasticity of the anterior suspensor returns the cable to the starting position, 
thereby completing the cycle. The operating sequence of the two cable control system may be summarized as follows. The forearm is raised. The elbow is locked in position. The terminal device is operated. The elbow is unlocked and the forearm is lowered. Elbow flexion, elbow lock, terminal device operation, the elbow is unlocked, the forearm is lowered. The points to be remembered about the two cable system used for the above elbow amputee are the interdependent function of the two cables, the harness, which allows the transmission of body motion and force to activate the prosthetic components.